um, that style transfer. Um, maybe quickly, like, let me just jump in and I can show uh, how this would work in Runway. So in Runway, um, there's a bunch of different style transfer models here. Um, most of these work with pre-uploaded images. So if you go to Adaptive Style Transfer and you... So basically the way... Uh, if I didn't explain this last week, the way Runway works is that there's a concept of models. These are the, all the models available to you. And what you want to do is you want to add them to what's called a workspace, which is like sort of like your area to work in. Um, so I'm just going to take Fast Style Transfer and add it to my workspace. You can create a brand new workspace and it gets pretty weird and funky. Um, when you're in here, uh, you'll see you have an input image option, and then you have some pre-built, uh, what they call checkpoints, but these are pre-built uh, output images. So like Cubist, I would assume, is like a Cubist image. There's clearly a Kandinsky. There's a Google Maps texture. But like you can't choose a texture in this version. So the only one in Runway where you can actually choose the texture is, let's find it real quick, it is arbitrary image stylization. Uh, so you'll see here, you have an input source and an out, and then this should actually be an output source, right? Well, I guess, what it, oh, no, what it's saying is, like, this is your content image and this is your style image. Um, so I can just quickly grab some images from my desktop to do with this. So here you just uh, pick File, uh, and then you're going to hit Open File. Let me just go to my Downloads folder and see if I've got anything fun in here. All right, let's try this one. So it has some cool texture in it. Let me find another image. Or actually, wait, I'm I want to reverse these, don't I? Um, I'll just, so what was the name of that? So off Tumblr. OK, so this is the content image. So I want to find a content image I think will be interesting. So let's just choose this image. OK, so that file is too big. So the other thing is, like, Runway is like very specific about exactly how big all your images can be. So sometimes you have to find like a low-res image to use. That's definitely going to be way too big. This one might work. Let's try it. Oh, OK. <laughs> Good live demo, Derek. Let's take one of these. Let's see, I want this one. Yeah. Um, so now, now, now with Runway, uh, once you hit Run, it's going to start charging me uh, per minute. So what it's going to do in the background is it's going to spin up basically a server, uh, like a paper space server. It's going to load it, and then it's going to run this process. Now there's a ton of other options in here. Um, that you might, if you want to play it around in Runway, you could try with it. So like the first thing is like, look at that. Like I was expecting to pick up a bunch of these details and it didn't. Um, now why might that be? It might be that this image is too large and I need to scale it down. Um, it might be, well actually let's try that. So let me just find this image really quickly. So the other thing you'll notice is like it outputs to 256 by 256, which is probably this image. Um, so I'm guessing that this is probably much larger than that. So I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to scale it down to match. So let me just really quickly sort of do that. It doesn't matter. I guess probably for now I could stop it. Also, yeah. they've given me a ton of credits to teach the class, so I just let it run. Oh, um, <laughs> if they're not generating? Yeah, so as long as this button says running or it says stop, you're being charged. Um, so I would definitely recommend like for you guys to like hit stop when you're done and, fit, and maybe debug uh, separately and then come back to it. Um, I'm just lazy at this point and I don't mind giving them my money. Um, but let me quickly find where that image was. Quitting the client automatically solve it? Yes, it does. Yep. Cool. So let me open this one. 
So I can sort of tell you that like, if you want to pick up this texture at this scale, you generally want the sizes of the images to match up. This is why inside of paper space, I have that style scale parameter, because you can do it automatically without having to open it in Photoshop, re-upload the image, like that sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna make, let's just make this 360. Um, I'll hit okay, I'll save this out as something smaller. Yeah, so one second, and I'll explain what that is, why that is. So the way that these models work is they load the image at full size. So, and then they look at, they try to compare the textures at the same size. So because this one is like a third of this size, it's probably blowing, this image looks really bigger, it looks bigger to the, um, to the, to the model. Um, so let's see if this actually helps. I don't know if that actually did. Let me just tweak a number here real quick and see if it does anything. Eh, it didn't really do much. So again, I'll also say I think style transfer in runway is like pretty bad. Uh, so like I would generally do style transfer in paper space. It takes a little longer to get set up, that sort of thing, and it doesn't run as well. The other models are generally like much better in, in, in runway. Um, let's see what time do we have. I can actually do, let me do a demo really quickly on paper space and show you what it looks like when you do it there. Um, Thankfully, you can show my password. That's nice. So in the in the runway model, you can do you know one uh, style image. So in yeah. the other model, you can do more. Yep, in the other model, you can do more. Yeah, exactly. So like, I generally will say like runway is good for like pretty basic stuff. Um, but I find it's not nearly as not nearly powerful enough to do the things that I want to be doing in it. Uh, so again, like um, just to like reiterate how paper space works, you go in, you find your machine. I often have four machines at any one time. Um, you probably only have one. You go in here and you uh, it says start. You turn it on. It's going to take a little bit of time to spin up. Like I know that this actually isn't ready for me to log into yet, um, but it's there. Uh, the next thing you do is you copy the public IP address. Uh, you go into terminal, let's create a new one, let's make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and then you do SSH paper space at, and then your public IP address. Hit enter. This might yell at me because it's probably actually not ready to go. And while it does that, I'm going to grab my password. Yeah, see, so basically if you get this message, that means like even though paper spaces is ready to go, it's not really. So sometimes I just give it another minute and I hit up again. Yeah, and now it's ready. So in here I have uh, neural style TF, which is the version of the style transfer library I use. So I'm just gonna move in there. Um, and then the other thing is, so like uh, we talked a little bit about FTP and again, like as we work on your project, I'll like, take you through these steps a little bit slower uh, and we'll record those sessions too so you have them. Um, but I'm just gonna really show you like really quickly like how I would work. Um, so in FTP, like I now have access using the same credentials and then my FTP library, I now have this folder here. So let me actually like, let's just do this. I'm gonna actually move in those images um, that I saw here. So I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna place this in the styles folder that uploaded already. I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna go to image input and I'm gonna want, which one did I grab? That's a future flower. I gotta figure out the name of this thing. This guy? No, not that one. Oh boy. This is where I show off how badly I named everything. 
Don't be like me, kids. If I can't find out, we'll just grab one of these other ones. Well, let's just grab one of these and oh, there we go. That's it. Um, cool. And I just want to grab. Let me just make sure the size is right. So this is a five twelve. I'm just going to drag that into image input. And so, if you're ever not sure on how to run these. Um, I, the link to that GitHub repo is in there, so you can always go back to that. Uh, and there will usually be documentation into how to run it. Obviously, if you're on Slack, you can also just find me and ask me. But this is basically where I want to be. Um, I know all the code is down here at the bottom. So what you want is you want a bunch of arguments. So what you're going to do is you just start building up your script, right? So I'm going to do Python, and then it's... Um, neural style.py and then let's see so there's an example here so I want content image so let's do content image and then I'm gonna go over here and my content image is named this I'm just gonna copy this name then I want style image and my style image is named this, which thankfully I don't have to type because that would be terrible. And then what else do I have? So what else is here? So there's a thing called max size. So I know I really want the max size to be no bigger than um, what the content image is because otherwise it's going to get fuzzy and blurry. So I'm going to type in 512. Uh, max iterations. So we can talk a little bit about iterations. Iterations are basically like what it does, it loops through and it tries to keep making the image stronger as it goes through. So max iteration is basically like a thing like baking, right? If you bake something for five minutes, it's still gonna be lumpy and cold. If you bake it for half an hour, it might get might be good. Depending on the image, right, or depending on what you're cooking, you have to run it for the right amount of time, right? So some images might take 300 iterations and it's good. Other images might take 1,000, and it's sort of up to you to sort of test and determine what you like. So I generally know that it works fine around 500, like that's just generally like my starting point. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna paste this in here, and I'm gonna hit 500. Um, so I think this is everything I need. I don't really care about uh, any of these. So it doesn't like require a certain number of arguments in order to run? No, I think the only ones that are required with this are your content image and your style images, because it has to know what, what it's pointing at, right? Mm -hmm. um, everything else, there's like defaults. So I think the default for max size is probably 1,000. Um, there's probably defaults for other things, and actually they're probably listed here. So max size. So yeah, the default is 512. Okay. Um, so all these like have defaults built into them. Um, I think the other thing that I want, I want to name this file because like the other thing is really important is like as you do this more and more, um, you will undoubtedly end up with like thousands of things all named result if you don't like name them. So I generally recommend naming this. So, and the way that I name these is I name them so that I remember what I actually built them out of, right? Because sometimes you'll find a beautiful image and you'll be like, how did I make that? What, were the, what was the style image? What was the content image? Where do I, like, how do I find this? So I'll usually like just rename, I'll name these so that they match this. So the image name for this will be like FF15. Hopefully I remember that what that means. And then um, Tumblr LUG. Like in reality, I would probably name those a little bit longer or like just change the names of these, of these files so that it makes more sense. Uh, but I think this is everything I need. I'm gonna hit run and see what happens. Cool. So you will get a lot of uh, messaging coming back from this thing. You don't really need to know what any of it means. It's basically just, it's running a bunch of different things in the machine side. Um, at some point,
I think we're good still. Basically, it takes a little bit of time for this to run. But I haven't gotten an error message back yet. Yeah, so we're still doing okay. But basically, just like uh, with Runway, this is probably what it's doing in, in the behind the scenes, right? It's like loading everything um, and it's just waiting for it to start running. And now it's a great part of the demo where I can't say anything, but... Okay, well, this runs. Any questions about style transfer? Um, the seed for the random number generator, like, is that so that you could kind of replicate the exact way that the style was being applied? Yeah. Okay. So basically what it does, and this is not true of the defaults here, but you can start with random noise and build off of random noise. So if you want, if you're doing that and you want to, like, be able to recreate it at like the same scale or redo it, then yeah, that's what the C generator is for. Um, why is this still not running? This is usually faster than this. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, oh, it's because it, well, I didn't, there's a message called verbose, which will spit out all of the iterations as it trains. Because I didn't put that in there, it just didn't show it. So you can see the, the amount of time it took for this thing to run is 102 seconds. Um, so what is that? That's two minutes. Um, so let's see what it made. So if I go back to my main folder, um, and here's a thing called image output, and in here is a thing called 500, and in here, oh, interesting. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. I think I, there's something off with the way I name this, and I have to name it differently, but this is what the image spit out. So that's way better, right, already? Um, and I think it's because of this library that's better. But we can also play with, let's do this. Let's do, let's, so let's repeat that, that command. Um, so you just press up and you get the entire thing all over again. This is really frustrating that like that's all blocked for you, but just trust me, it's there. Actually, here's what I'll do. That also works. Um, oh, perfect. <laughs> of course. I can like figure out computer things, but figure out that would have taken me like an hour. Uh, cool. So anyway, so that's up there. Now let's actually do style scale. So um, there's a thing in here called style scale. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to change the scale of the style images. So I know that style image is like maybe a little bit bigger, uh, maybe like a third bigger than the other than the content image. So let's just try and match them one to one. So let's just say style scale dot six six six. So that's going to shrink it down sixty six percent. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to figure out what I did wrong there with the image with the folder name. Is there a thing called output here? Ah, image dir output. That's what I did wrong. So instead of name, I would use image dir output. Um, and the reason is that that creates a folder, so then I can go back and find that folder. So I'm just going to use this again. I'm going to say dot slash um, and style scale. So let's run this one again. I didn't put in that verbose, so you can't see it generate. Actually, hold on. I'm just going to quit this now. Uh, if you ever want to quit stuff, you just hit Control C, and that will stop any command that's running. So I'm just going to stick in verbose, and that should spit out um, some other stuff. But train, yeah. So see, now you're getting like building the network. This is actually the network, if you know what that means, which you don't need to. And now it's training. So this is at iteration zero. Now it's at fifty. So it's basically like it's it keeps cycling over this image to try to make it better. Like normally I would say just like cooking also don't watch this while it's running because it just like feels like it takes forever then usually what I'll do is like again I'm watching TV while I run this stuff and I'll have like you know my screen is doing something else but I got this open just to check and like make sure it's like not stopped ready
All right, there we go. So that somehow it was also faster. I don't think, I mean, it's six seconds faster. I don't know if that had to do with the scaling or whatever it is, um, but clearly it happened a little bit faster. Uh, so now my, my image output folder is here. So that's even better, right? Like now you actually get like those details and you get some of the texture in here. So again, like this is where I would play with this, right? Like I might make it even smaller and see like, do I get something else? Um, like actually let's do this. So if I, I'll just turn down the iterations um, so it'll run a little bit faster and it might not look as great, but it'll still be there. Let's turn this into 0.25. So what's also cool about this library is you can actually see what it did. So one of the things that's here is here's style zero, right? So that's the image it took. That's the image it based it on. Whereas if we look at this one, which is the first iteration, you'll see it took, took a much closer crop, right? Because they have to match. The, the image size have to match. So it probably picked up more of this, which has less texture than this. So that's part of what I'm talking about is like when you do scale, you can sort of see what it's doing behind the scenes. But what I also like about this library is then you can also see exactly what you did, right? Um, and what's nice here as well is if in, in metadata.txt, this is all of the settings you provided it. So if you want to remake that exact same image, you could input in this these same parameters and you would get the same image, hopefully. All right, cool. That took, wow, okay, that took like a quarter of the time. All right, well, let's see what that one turned out. <clears throat> oh, it's going to 200 instead of 300. So now we're getting really like nice detail there, right? Um, and if we look at what the style image did, or what the crop was, so you'll see now it was picking up like really tiny little hairline details. How does it generate that? So basically, because the images have to be the same size for this library to run, the only way to like make this smaller than the content image is to replicate it. Okay. Like you basically you could like have it spread and just have it be blank, but then it would only pick up this in one place, right? So um, this is what I found just works well is like just to do some mirroring. Also the mirroring is nice because then you get different textures in different directions. Um, so this is the neural style library and like I you'll see it's like way better to use than the runway version. Um, but if you want to play around and just sort of like see what you can get out of runway, you're more than welcome to. Um, but this is the library that's on your paper space machine. And so I've recorded this so you can like go back and obviously this is something you want to work on in more detail. Like we can go over how to like do other things with it. Um, I didn't show you how to do multiple images with it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, I just had a question about like the cooking time, so to speak. Yeah. Like, like that one had fewer iterations, but it seems like it turned out okay. Like, like how do you know if something is like <laughs> so it's really that's really or it's really up to you um like so, what would overcooking look like versus undercooking well why don't we do this why don't why don't i run it for 2000 iterations we'll come back to it and look at it um so basically i'll keep going through the class but i'll run this in the background and we'll just sort of see um what it looks like so wait so what did i so well the other thing is we also change the scale so let me go back to this scale and let me do iteration let's just do 2000 iterations and we'll come back after uh, the next model, and then we'll look at it and see what happens. Because this is going to take, this will probably take five to ten minutes to run. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, really quickly, I'm going to jump back to our model here and see if this stops. So it did. So this one that took three two thousand iterations took three hundred and fifty six. What is that? That's six minutes. Yeah. So like six minutes. It's actually pretty good. Paper Space is like a very fast server, so it will generally run a little bit faster than other servers I use. Um, but let's go over here and check this one out. So 2,000. So that's comparing to this. So this is 2,000. That's 500. So you'll see it does look a little different, right? Like this one, which is less iterations, has more texture here than it does at 2,000. So this is really, it's up to you as the artist, right? Which of these do I like more? Which of these is like closer to the visual I had in my head or just something I like more? 
um, you can train this thing for like 5,000 iterations and it's just gonna keep, I find it tends to lose a little bit of detail as it bakes more, but like it feels crisper in its own way, right? So like this compared to that, like this one feels a little muddy. It's got some texture here that gets erased. Like look up here on the top right, right? So like erases some texture. So you can decide which of these do I like more. It's sort of the artist to decide. 